hello, hello, Lord of the Craft friends! You all seemed so terribly adamant about my continued coverage of news things, and thus here I am once more to sputter and spit all the things you could easily have read on the forums. Thank you all so much for your compliments towards my mouth noises and your laziness. That said, let us begin. After some tumultuous times for the tech team, finally we've got some good news. TeamSpeak is back up and operational. It has plenty of Minecraft icons to represent every single staff group and more for channel leaders. With TeamSpeak's pearly gates wide open, everyone is invited to return and experiment with all new features explained last week. Along with this good news comes better news about new plugins. Patch 3.6 is out with plenty of new features such as the Donor's Den, a place for those who have donated to the server to go relax and build creatively. Chairs, they have returned after a long holiday for all those who feel crouching just doesn't cut it. Horse Helper, a fix that equestrian enthusiasts have been looking forward to. Even better books, now with improved bookshelves. And Auctioneers, an early shop-like plugin that donators will get early access to. Sporadic would like to ask all those who are capable designers of dungeons to volunteer their help with the dungeon plugin. Now on to this week's top story. The anticipated GM meeting brought an outcome to many departments across the server, shifting the operations of Lord of the Craft towards a new day. Firstly, law will no longer require approval to be implemented. Certain rules detailing what is appropriate will be released to guide your new suggestions. For the meantime, there will be no new additions until such guidelines are in place to avoid anarchy. The next big change is the implementation of our shift into RPRPG. The summation is, if you can't do it in Minecraft, you can't do it. While this creates some clear rulings towards some actions, it leaves others somewhat ambiguous. Hopefully the law guidelines will also detail some of the possible issues with RPRPG format and explain how best to proceed. Some 4.0 topics were discussed, with the lack of regions in the future map and how housing will be dealt with being high on the agenda. And in his first move towards a newfound career as a self-help author, Danny's 12 Steps to Success made its public debut as he made his unfortunate leave from his position as admin. The first piece of server moderator news is that we now have server moderators! The new members of this team are Skeeking, Cruz, Aislin, Zarsi's Sparrow, Ben B -B 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 Boy, and Koto. We welcome them all onto the team and hope they'll do a good job with Modrex and their various other duties. Eurocept has made a couple of changes to the villain application team. Some rules on arson and theft requiring out-of-character consent have been altered, and new members have been recruited to review more villain applications. We are informed that the magical changes discussed during the GM meeting have been taken to the MAT. These are said to be still under discussion regarding what actions will be taken, thus no communications have yet been made public. As yet, the magic team are awaiting orders for how to proceed, specifically regarding magic lore, hence this month's build-up of magic lore proposals. Brand New Kitten is now the leader of the event team. Six members were removed from the team and eight new members were added, these being Duquesta, Patriotic Fool, Acorn Lad, Bath Rugman, Falcor, Drithrithrick, Zico99, and Snow Shovel. The team is planning to assign ET members to specific regions and thus have a constant storyline event per region that carries on over time. And now onto roleplay news, with 89% more not Malinor. In the lands of the human race, a new holy order has emerged with the same principles as the old and infamous group, the White Rose. They are called the Order of the Griffin, and are now recruiting. They plan to make a name for themselves among the Empire, and soon, Anthos. However, it is doubtful that they alone will successfully fight off the growing rebel forces which have launched Operation Cadron. The rebels also gained a valuable ally when they promised the Dwarven Nation that they'd accept religious tolerance and, furthermore, give the Dwarven Legion free military access in human lands. Speaking about dwarves, they have elected a new king named Indigo Stormhammer. This was followed by many feasts, which at a point were interrupted by a brief Orenian raid. The dwarves praised Yamakar that his reign will be long and prosperous. Along with the coronation came a new edict from the dwarves which commanded that the Ardunian faction become the Kingdom of Yaldum, or as I like to call it, the Yaldum of Kingdom. This wasn't a good time for the Ardunians just after the demotion of Lachlan Mordelendil. While they vote for a new leader, the Ardunian faction split. Both factions soon left the Dwarven lands and hoped for independence, one going towards Orin for the sake of nobility, and the other travelled to Malinor, which already has an overpopulated refugee camp. Finally, we have an insy tiny point of news coming to us from the Orcs. Gronk is dead. Very dead. Our news gremlin said, and I quote, Not big surprise. That wasn't a joke from me, that was written in the script. Thanks, media team. From the community this week were a number of different discussions regarding magic and combat. Conversations splitted out in a number of different directions. Is the community too centered around combat roleplay? Is magic not rare enough? Should mages be better represented in combat or be debuffed? 
With magic still intended for Nexus combat, this is surely only the beginning of a greater debate about the future of combat. Last but far from least, Sparrow and LEGO Xbox have finalised their surveys. They have been released and you are all encouraged to fill them out. They are completely anonymous, so nothing you can say can possibly be held against you. We hope you enjoy the surveys and deeply consider any responses. The staff are highly appreciative of the survey results and often use them to shape a calculated idea of what the community is concerned about, much more so than the vocalised cries of individuals. And that is it once more, everyone. I probably won't be on the next report as I feel guilty hogging the Lord of the Craft news things. So, why not put up suggestions for the next person to do the talking mouth noises? The person who suggests the best one wins cookies and a very saucy glance from my possible replacement. Now I say to you, good night, good evening, good day, and good afternoon.